Hi, everyone. My name is Yepsara Samara Mengistu. I use they, them pronouns. I am the administrative coordinator for the Office of Equity in Title IX. My supervisor, Leslie, is also here with me today, and um, I'll let her introduce herself, um, and we'll get started on our quick presentation for y'all. Hi, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, and uh, I see you nodding. I can't see everyone. Okay, great. Um, so welcome to American University, and I'm happy to be with you for the next 20 minutes or so. I'm going to talk pretty fast, um, and I hope that I will have opportunities moving forward to connect with all of you and, um, of course, serve as a resource to you um, on these issues that we'll talk about today um, throughout your time here at American University. And I'll just apologize in advance. I'm not in town. I'm on vacation. If there's a little bit of noise, I've got my background up. It's because I'm with my family um, and they are moving around behind me. <laughs> so, all right. If Sarah's going to help me out with the slides since I just have my laptop and I was pretty convinced that I would not be able to manage it all on the laptop screen. So we can get started. All right, um, just give me one moment. Sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties. Which I certainly <laughs> knew I would have. <laughs> I am on campus right now, so that's probably the issue just because there's so many new families and friends on campus and it's really, really busy, so. Internet's a little bit slow, so I apologize in advance. Um, but I'll start talking. So the Office of Equity in Title IX is a relatively new office on campus. Um, this office was established in August of 2020 by American University, and um, I joined the university at the end of September 2020. And if you go back to that year 2020, you'll remember that um, most universities, including American University, went into remote operations, um, and American University was in a remote operations for that entire year. So that means that this office started in remote operations. Um, it started with me and one other staff person who um, had been the Title IX investigator for student-on-student -student sexual misconduct matters. Um, and that office had been located in the Office of Student Affairs. She was moved to work to this brand new office. And in that first year of remote operations, my charge was to build this office, set up systems, establish processes, and hire, including hiring staff, all of whom were hired um, in that remote environment. So we spent that first year entirely remote. The second year, the campus opened up. And we tried our best to get information out there to people and individuals did use our utilize our services um, even remotely. Um, in the second year we were um, the campus was reopened and we were on campus a little bit, not a lot because there was no office space for us. Um, and about halfway through the year, um, office space was found for us in um, thir the thir 3201 New Mexico Avenue building. And that is where we still are today. So you can find us at 3201 New Mexico Avenue on the third floor and that's suite 395. Um, we do operate as a hybrid office. So um, different staff people are in the office on, on different days. Um, pretty much Monday through Thursday, Fridays, not as much anyone's there. Um, but the office, given the nature of the work, we do do pre-scheduled meetings with individuals. Um, and most of those meetings tend to be virtual, although individuals can certainly meet with us in person if they'd like to do that. It just takes a little bit more coordination, um, particularly with um with anybody, staff and faculty, because of the movement in and out of the campus, and with students, because frankly, we're not right in the um, regular pathway that they are walking all day on campus. So, Sarah, are you ready? Maybe not. You're muted. I should be. I'm sorry. It just won't let me scroll from slide to slide for some reason. Um, 
Yes, I will forward it to you right now. Let's see, sorry. Are you forwarding to Anna? She's forwarding to me and I will, I will move through the slides. Okay. Right so the first slide would really just talk about what our office does. So we are, and so I'll start talking. I can do this. We are the office that is responsible for the university's response to reports and complaints regarding discrimination, harassment, and sexual misconduct. So you will commonly hear people on campus refer to us as the Title IX office. And Title IX, of course, is um, uh, the federal law that prohibits sex discrimination in education programs or activities that receive federal funds, which American University certainly does. But our office is the Office of Equity and Title IX, and we in fact encompass all and respond to all of the discrimination and harassment based on legally protected categories that might occur um, within our education programs and activities. We are responsible for engaging in informal resolution as well as formal resolution. Formal resolution is a complete and thorough investigation and it is the only way anyone could be disciplined at the end of any process we are engaging in. We provide supportive measures. Uh, thank you, Lindsay, that's where we are, perfect. We provide supportive measures um, to individuals who are alleging discrimination or sexual misconduct. We provide compliance training, which I'm going to do very fast today with you all, which ensures that we all understand our rights and responsibilities here at American University with respect to these matters. We collaborate with our partners on prevention efforts, and we are the office responsible for the implementation of the following two university policies, the Title IX sexual harassment policy and the discrimination and non-Title IX sexual misconduct policy. And I'll talk about those two very, very quickly with you today. Next slide, please. So as I said, Title IX is the federal law that prohibits um, recipients of federal funding from discriminating on the basis of sex in education programs or activities. And because the university receives federal funding and federal funding is very um, broad, it could be $1 that a student might get in terms of federal financial assistance, all the way up to large um, federal funds for research that faculty members might be doing. All of the, if it's even $1, we are obligated to um, comply with various federal laws, including Title IX. Our responsibility under Title IX is to respond to, to remedy, and then try to prevent future occurrences of sex discrimination, including sexual harassment and sexual violence. I wanna note here as a reminder for everyone that Title IX is not only about sexual violence. Title IX is a sex discrimination law, and that is a broad law regarding sex discrimination, and it applies to all students, all faculty, and all employees, and any community member that might engage with a program that we are providing here at American University. Next slide, please. We are also responsible for complying with other discrimination laws. And there are numerous um, federal laws, as well as local laws. Here in DC, we have the DC Human Rights Law, which is one of the most expansive human rights laws in the country and covers many legally protected categories that are not covered by federal law. So most individuals tend to know that federal law, um, anti-discrimination law covers race, national origin, sex, disability, age, um, more recently, gender identity or expression and sexual orientation, DC human rights laws have always covered all of that and many more things that you might not think of, such as um, discrimination on the basis of source of income, discrimination on the basis of political affiliation, and there are, there are many others. Um, it is the university's discrimination and non-Title IX sexual misconduct policy that addresses all of the local laws as well as um, federal laws. And it is called non-Title IX sexual misconduct policy because it also covers sexual misconduct that does not fall within the purview of Title IX sexual harassment. 
because the definition of Title IX sexual harassment was narrowed in August of 2020 by the prior administration. So the university's commitment is to continue broadly covering all of the different forms of discrimination, including sexual misconduct that have always been covered here at American University and providing processes and an opportunity to resolve those complaints within our university. And we do that through both policies. Next slide, please. Very briefly, this shows you what's covered under each policy. You don't need to worry about that. That's why we have a staff in this office. We will figure out once a complaint comes to us which policy um, that complaint falls under because there are different processes um, depending on which policy. But in general, the Title IX sexual harassment um, policy covers sexual harassment, sexual assault, including rape, and that definition of sexual assault includes a lot of other things as well, dating and domestic violence, and stalking. And this covers conduct that occurs in any AU education program, whether that's happening on our campus or um, in an off-campus venue, but it's our program that we're delivering, and within the United States. Next slide, please. So the discrimination and non-Title IX sexual misconduct policy covers everything else. So that would be discrimination and harassment on the basis of all um, of the various legally protected categories, such as race, national origin, disability, age, um, and so on. Sexual assault, which is the same definitions as in the Title IX sexual harassment policy. Sexual exploitation, which is not covered under Title IX sexual harassment, dating and domestic violence, and stalking. This policy also travels with all of our community members who might be engaging in an American University um, program outside of the United States. So this is the policy that ensures the protections to our community members wherever we may go um, wearing our American University hats. Next slide, please. So what are your responsibilities, our responsibilities, my responsibility to and everyone in my office? AU community members employed by the university have a duty to report any conduct that might fall under one of these policies that you learn about. So if um, a student discloses to you that um, they faced some form of sexual harassment or they believe they're being subjected to some form of race discrimination, whether that's by another student by an or an employee or somehow within a classroom, that must be reported to this office. I sort of have two titles, Assistant Vice President for Equity and Title IX Coordinator um, for the purposes of reporting. Um, it is one way that you report and I'm the same person and those reports come into this office. Um, so as soon as you receive a dis direct disclosure within your job function, you must report um, that potential violation to this office. If you receive a disclosure from another party saying, hey, I heard this about someone else, that has to be reported. We also, while if you don't have names of individuals, it, we may not be able to follow up and um, do a lot to assist them, but we still want to um, be keeping track of all of these reports because they may come back at some later time. And then of course, if you witness the behavior yourself, you need to report it. Both policies have provisions in them that say that community members who have this duty to report discrimination, harassment, or sexual violence may be subject to discipline or corrective action for failing to fulfill this obligation. As a practical matter, given that this office really is not quite three years old and started in remote op operations, and every day we have new employees coming on board, um, I take an education approach. And when we learn that someone has not reported because we do typically find out when people interact with our, a our office, they tell us everyone they've talked to. I typically reach out and we are just reminding people of 
their obligation to report. Most of the reports we get are from our employees. So I would say that um, American University employees are doing really an amazing job in filing reports and enabling us to reach out to individuals alleging harm. Next slide. So you receive a disclosure from someone and we want to give you, a, I want to give you a few tips on what to do. If someone comes to you with a report, you want to say thank you for telling with something that happened to you. Thank you for telling me. And you want to immediately let them know that you're responsible for reporting to the university and that you're going to have to file a report with this office. You want to provide that transparency to them. You want to do it as early on as possible when they start telling you about an incident, because we always want the individual harm to be able to have control over who, who they want to be speaking to at any given moment during um, the handling of their matter. And we want to give them that space. And the only way we can do that is by letting them know what our own obligations are. You want to avoid making suggestions, particularly with students, for how a student should proceed. And you certainly don't want to get into trying to investigate by asking questions. You want to be in listen-only mode, take the information down so that you can make the report. Next slide. So you receive the disclosure and what I request of everybody is that we be as informed as possible in providing individuals with the confidential resources on campus because confidential resources do not have to submit a report to this office and an individual that may be where they are in their journey with their issue. And so these are the confidential resources that the university provides that individuals could speak with in order to um, decide and talk through what they want their next steps to be. So the first um, few are student resources. And then the last one are the um, professional counselors through human resources that are available, available to all staff. Next slide. So how to submit a report. We have an online reporting form that we utilize. This goes straight into a case management system. It is only accessible to individuals in my office and not even all of them have access to it. So it is private in that sense. And that reporting form allows us to immediate, pretty immediately send outreach to the individual who is alleging some form of discrimination, harassment, um, or sexual violence. Um, that is the form that we ask everybody to use. Of course, if the report comes in in an email to us, we will then um, put the report in ourselves, but we do need to get it into our case management system in order to track it and in order to immediately do outreach. Next page. I don't, if you can scan these two, we put up these um, two codes and one is those resources and it's an expanded resource sheet that I just went over and the other is to the rep online reporting. You can also find all of this on our webpage. It's on the front of the webpage and very easy to locate. You can click a button there that says, um, you know, report reporting form. And there are not a lot of fields for the reporting form. You do as a reporter need to enter your information and then you will be asked to enter the information of the individual. And it is that who's who told you about the matter and it is that individual who we will be in contact with. Next page. Oh, sorry. Is it okay, Leslie, if I note something? Yes. Do you need I to also, Yes, uh, just in the, the slide previous as well as on our website, you will also find additional resources and information that you can just copy and paste into your syllabi to provide to students so that they're aware of all the resources that we have as well. Thanks. So why is it important to report? When we receive a report, we are not, and this is really important, immediately initiating an investigation. That's not the purpose. 
what we are doing is we are reaching out to the individual who has said something happened to them because we want to provide them with resources and what their options are for handling their matter. So, oh, Lindsay's saying we're out of time. I'm gonna talk really fast, Lindsay, I promise. We want to provide them with supportive measures that they are entitled to by the university. And we want to talk to them about next steps. And this ensures our compliance under the law and provides individuals with the support they need. Next slide. After you report, we do outreach to the individual, we do an intake if they want to engage with us, and then we provide them with supportive measures as appropriate and talk to them about what type of resolution might be appropriate for their matter. Next slide. I want to remind everyone here, because we are employees, about FERPA, which protects the privacy of student education records. The records in this office are considered student education records, so we will not be talking with a reporter such as an employee about what we are doing if it is a student matter, unless we need to engage with you for a particular reason about that matter. Next slide. I got to the end. This is our contact information. I did it, Lindsay. Um, and this is how you find us, equity office at American.edu. We're the only ones that can see that email address. And then we have a training email address if you want training, but if you send it to equity office, we can do that as well. And here's the reporting link. And I really do hope I have additional opportunities to meet with all of you, but feel free to reach out to me at annexdean at American.edu at any point, and I'm always happy to answer questions. We are a resource for our entire community. Thank you so much, Leslie and Ibsera. So we do have a, a about five minutes of a break right now. So I would say I would encourage anyone who has any questions to post them in the chat. And if you have time to stay, sure. feel free to answer them, them there, or we will uh, take those questions out later and send them to you uh, and, and make sure that all questions are answered that are posted. But thank you so much for now. and.